welcome to this session um, about uh, collaborative cities. So I think this, this panel will build on uh, very nicely on the, the, the examples that we heard from the Netherlands, from Seoul, and, and, and from San Francisco. But I, I think that um, there is enormous pent-up demand in you to ask questions. Uh, you've been waiting all day, you want to ask questions, so please get ready. We will try to uh, set the stage, maybe make some provocative short remarks, but we really want to get you involved. So I invite you to jump in, stand up, put your hand up, grab the microphone from me, but do, you know, get involved. And there will be time at the end for questions, but you should feel free to jump in anytime. You can even come and sit with us. This, this is a collaborative session. So, um, yes, I am Mathieu Lefebvre. I'm, uh, the, uh, I help found and I run a, a nonprofit, which is basically a think tank about the future of cities called the New Cities Foundation. We are very, very passionate at New Cities Foundation around a vision of a world where cities drive progress. And I think that both for demography, and you all know the figures of the enormous growth uh, of the population of cities, but also for a whole bunch of issues, cities are great laboratories. And in fact, they have always been great laboratories for social change. So if we look back at the 21st century in 100 years and think, we did okay, this is the, we did better on a whole bunch of indicators, we think that that will be thanks to cities. And I think the, 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 the sharing and collaboration angle is a very interesting one to explore um, and, and what we're going to try to do is to really unpack and look at the, the, the link between this, this field we're exploring around collaboration and this natural laboratory of cities. Uh, New Cities Foundation actually used to share an office with WeShare. Uh, and so we're a partner of, of, uh, of WeShare and really we, we, we salute what they're doing in, in, in trailblazing. And New Cities Foundation is very proud to be based in Paris and so it's great to see many, many people uh, who've come to, to visit us here in Paris. So here's how we're going to do this, if, my, if the panelists are okay with this. We are going to do a very quick round of introductions. So under 120 seconds, if you can, tell us who you are and really what you're passionate about and what the questions that you're, you're asking yourself around this theme of, of collaborative cities. And then we'll do a little bit of questions uh, with, uh, I will ask you um, some questions and, and again, the audience should jump in. But I wanna leave at least 20 minutes for the audience to, to, to have a role. So, if that is okay, we will get started. And I will start with Amandine. Hello everybody, so my name is Amandine, I'm the co-founder I, have, I had co-founded um, a non-profit organization named Colporter. Uh, we are very interested by the um, potential of collaborative economy to develop, to rethink uh, our territorial development models. And my conviction is that uh, territorial um, collaborative practice are not urban practice, but are uh, human practice. So um, I'm covering that uh, the issues of the collaborative economy um, concern urban and uh, uh, rural uh, territories too, that we will uh, speak about in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Christian Yayone. I'm uh, a professor of public law. I run this research project and research center at Lewis University, which is called Laboratory for the Governance of Commons. We are basically trying to hack the public government, the public, the, you know, the city government, and or in urban areas mainly. We are working with a lot of people in Italy. A lot is happening in Italy. We share Italy is, is doing great stuff, and we are working together. Basically, we are trying to transform cities into collaborative commons, uh, handing over the power to to deliver services and to manage uh, urban commons to the citizens. So this is what we are really keen on doing together, and we would like to create you know, a, a network of uh, research centers, uh, actors worldwide, because one of the things that I I it is important in Europe is to go beyond the pact of stability. Maybe this is something new to, to Americans, but we in Europe, we have to fight against this uh, pact of stability that uh, hinders the possibility of cities to make innovation. So we laid down this regulation in Bologna, which is centered upon the idea of a pact of collaboration with all the local actors uh, uh, for a new economic development plan based on collaborative economy, social innovation, and governance of the commons. Thank you. 
Marco Torregrossa. I am a connector for WeShare, and I'm the managing director of the European Sharing Economy Coalition, which some of you may not know, but it's the first attempt uh, of a multi-stakeholder network at the European level that is advocating for uh, uh, policy framework conditions and uh, an enabling environment for the uh, sharing economy to mature and become uh, mainstream. What, so I will speak up now. <laughs> what excites me the most uh, um, uh, w within the topics we are discussing today is how policy could be innovative. So policy innovation and policy disruption, uh, which are terminology we usually um, ad uh, adapt to technologies, but policy can also play a big role into that. Hello there, um, I'm Helen Goulden. I work at an innovation charity in the UK called Nesta. We presented a little bit earlier this afternoon, so you might have heard from some of my colleagues. Um, we're a charity, um, basically I run the innovation lab there and we're basically dedicated to supporting innovation for public good. We do that in a number of ways. We finance innovation, we research into emerging trends and futures. Um, and we've been interested in the collaborative economy probably since about 2009, you know, when you started to bring together uh, digital connectivity, social networks, uh, location, and all different kinds of mapping to create a new kind of infrastructure, which became very clear that you could think about new ways of organizing, coordinating knowledge, behaviors, money, labor, all sorts of things. The questions that I have, um, uh, and I probably have more questions than I have any expertise, I should say, um, on here, is, is what does the sharing economy or the collaborative economy really mean for places? How can you use it as an organizing principle for a sustainable city? And that includes not just the, the gra grassroots and the grass top. So how do city leaders and politicians create the right kind of conditions for the kind of potential for the collaborative economy to grow and flourish? I have an interest in where power resides in all of that um, and at a very broad sense um, and have a passion for um, how you can apply the collaborative economy to address much more crunchy, high cost, high anxiety public services. Okay, um, I am Miguel Ferrer and I'm a policy, um, public policy and regulatory advisor in innovative and digital activities. Uh, first of all, sorry for my English, it's like it's English for ninjas, a little bit. Um, I'm the director of, the, of Breakthrough, it's a, it's a firm focused in advice, new business or new activities to have an um, accurate uh, ecosystem and also for pre-existing business to adapt and to have a digital transition. Um, I am so uh, one of the coordinators of Share in España. It's a trade uh, business group uh, of companies focused in peer-to-peer -peer and on-demand uh, activities. We are uh, trying to explain to the Spanish authorities that this is this is a very good opportunity. Uh, we are very focused, as Albert and Javier Creus are defending also in Spain, in the in the idea of the producer or citizen producer and the huge opportunities that this means. And uh, in Sierra España right now, uh, there are 38 companies. Uh, 30 of those are Spaniards. So it's a very important figure that shows that Spain has a huge ecosystem and many opportunities on this. And next Sunday or this Sunday is going to be the local elections. So, I mean, for me, it's, it's great to be here and to know more about the cities because many of the new brand political parties are, mm, or hey, they have a, a good awareness about the sharing economy and the, all the opportunities that this represents. Great, excellent, thank you so much. So you, knew, you now know uh, who is here and what is, is sort of keeping them up at night. Um, and I, I, as we go into the discussion, it'd be great, and also for you um, um, as, as participants and, and, and with your questions, if we try to focus a little bit on the point of view of the mayor, I mean, or, 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 or power, as you were, you were referring to it, because we work with a lot of cities, and, you know, for a lot of cities, um, 
you know, the sharing economy is kind of a buzzword or a communications thing, but they don't really know what it is. But what keeps them up at night is their top five things. And top five things are different for every city. So in Paris, for example, our top five things are, well, Parisians help me out, but housing, uh, pollution now, definitely, uh, maybe jobs for sure. So, you know, like how can this sharing thing that they don't really understand really help them with those very concrete indicators? So if in your responses and in, in thinking about this, you could uh, really try to, to pin it to something very concrete. But Helen, I'll, I'll start with you if, if you don't mind, because Nesta's done this great research on, on the sharing economy. And so I'll, I'll, I'll try to, 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 to get, get, some, get some initial thoughts out of you about sort of what is the fuss about you know, cities and the sharing economy? Like, is there a real correlation? Is it, is it a non-thing? Like, is it, as you thought about the sharing economy in your research, did you look at cities uh, particularly? Uh, so, in our initial research, no, we have not looked at cities specifically, but we are, um, uh, we've just, and we'll perhaps talk a bit about later, we've just developed a kind of um, an early stage framework for how policy leaders might think about kind of the dimensions of a sharing city. Um, but the reason it's special, I mean, it's critical. It's, I mean, the, your question, the short answer to your question is yes, of course, it's completely nestled within it because it probably bears repeating that um, cities are great attractors. You know, we as humans desire to be with each other in very closely confined spaces. You know, whether or not this fetishization of cities will continue in 10, 20, 50 years' time, which is entirely plausible that it wouldn't. Um, uh, for the moment, at least, um, we find ourselves in kind of very densely populated, um, uh, very diverse populations. And where you get diversity and where you get density of population, you get huge creativity. You get huge engines of innovation, and that's what sort of drives our economic powerhouses. These are amazing kind of experiments. They are very exploratory labs. On the flip side, of course, um, cities are unsustainable. You look out here, it looks fine. It's not fine at all. At, um, you know, it, not, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but you know, someday we're going to have to address some pretty crunchy questions. Cities are polluting. Um, they have no concept, really, of a, a removal chain, despite all the focus on supply chains into cities. Um, they harbor great inequality. Uh, they foster really quite depressing social challenges. Um, they're voracious consumers of all manner of resources, whether that's FMCG or energy or water or whatever. So there is a massive challenge there. Now, if you think about that kind of engine of innovation and creativity nestled within all those very serious challenges, the collaborative economy, I'm not saying it's the panacea to all ills, but if you think about all of the challenges that we face, whether that's around education, healthcare, transport, whatever it is in a city, the collaborative economy can put its hand up and say, well, there's a different way of doing that, actually. Now, it may not be completely right, and it may work out that in an experiment it doesn't work, but it has some answers that I think we've been struggling for for many years. So I, I think that that's great, and I'd, I'd love to go into this a little bit deeper and to say, like, concretely, what can the public sector, for example, do to activate this? I mean, what levers does it have? We talked about procurement, maybe, et cetera. Like, what, you know, because a lot of the mayors and city halls we talk to, unless it's the super sophisticated city, are like, well don't really know how to do this. So let's think about that. We have our first question, which is great. Thank you so much. I have no bag to give you. I can give you my bag yeah. if you want. I'm Hannu Koistinen from Finland. Uh, my perspective is that cities can be seen as a cancer of the globe. So this will add some challenge here. So we are consuming some 80% of the, all the resources and just polluting. At the same time, people in the cities have power, economical power to change it and kind of heal the cities. But we are in very big hurry and I think that in a way we are now in a core of development here. So there is huge amount of creativity in the cities. There are huge amount of potential to solve these problems. But just recently, I, I was finding this idea when watching some pictures of the logistical systems of the globe and pictures of energy consumption and lights and stuff like that. I think that this should be also considered as a key point to see the problems as well as 
finding the solutions and really taking things seriously is a big communicational issue, I think. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I think that I share Helen's enthusiasm for cities, but they can be very problematic. And uh, certainly if you go to lots of cities in the emerging world that are like doubling in size every 10 years, they can feel a little bit like cancer sometimes. Anyway, uh, but thank you very much. And please, I encourage all of you to put your hand up. Um, we, um, I wanted to ask uh, 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 Chris. Uh, we, we have two more questions. We have two more questions. Fantastic. <laughs> one, okay. one here, one Sorry, side. Sorry, we're going to jump back <laughs> and forth. Be, this is really hacking. If there. you can just, to, to facilitate this and to make sure that we can talk to as many people as we can, if you could just keep it short and just ask a question. So... There was a mass migration of people from the countryside to new cities and old cities over the past 100 years or so. However, since the internet has been available to the public, there have not been any collaboratively built cities. And there have been some proposals by Paul Romer. He was working with the Nicaraguan government, and that never came to fruition. Recently, last week, there was a proposal between Serbia and, I believe, Kosovo to build a new city called Lieberland. I'm curious what you guys think about this. And instead of only focusing on these old cities that were built for cars, building cities that are made for people. Sounds, sounds good. Um, so does anyone want to react to that? Is it possible to build? Is Bologna being built as a collaborative city? Not exactly a new city, but, you know. I think one should go and see how the Paul Romer's experiment went to understand, you know, what the danger is of uh, private cities because that's where it leads. So what we tried to do, and, you know, building new cities for people, uh, then you can end up like Brasilia. Huh? That it was designed by architects and not for architects and not for people. So, I always say that uh, sh the city should be should should be designed by citizens. So that's the the approach that we used in Bologna. Uh, you know, the question was what what are the moves that a mayor a city should take to become a collaborative city. So I think that the three moves are are these ones. The first one is work on changing the bureaucratic culture. A mayor has a first enemy in the bureaucracy because the bureaucracy has been designed in the 19th century to hold information, concentrate power, and exercise it even against the delegates of the citizens, the politicians. Mm -hmm. So today, the way your cities are governed is through this conflict between politicians and bureaucrats. So you need to find first the, uh, the institutional innovators, the bureaucrats that are inside the machine, they, they are inside the administrative community, as I call it, because it's not a machine, it's a community. Work with them and change the culture to, to make them understand that citizens are not the problems, are not the problem, they are the solution. They can be the solution. First move is laying down public, local public policies that are specifically tailored to the needs and the local conditions of the specific city. You can't come up with you know, an overall structure without taking into account the vocation, the local vocation of the citizens and the community you are designing the governance scheme for. So this was one of the design principles that also Elena Rostrom laid down, you know, to adapt to local conditions the, uh, the governance rules. Third thing is to create inside the local government uh, public innovation research units. Uh, the government, the city right. government needs to exercise every day. It's not anymore, you know, the government of the 20th century that you, has a fordistic approach, mm -hmm. a one-size-fits-all solution for all the problems of all the citizens. Uh, urban contexts are heterogeneous, so you need to come up with di different solutions for different uh, constituencies mm -hmm. uh, and you need to work with them you need to work with communities and this is what we are doing in Bologna I'm, I'm going to be head of this uh, public innovation research unit that is going to go to you know each and every department 
and ask them how could you how could we together redesign the public policies that you are using in a Leviathan state kind of mode into a collaborative state kind of approach. So let's redesign, the, let's see if collaboration can be a solution. I'm not saying that collaboration, public collaboration is a solution for everything, right. but let's try to at, at least try to design new solutions right. together with the communities that are pushing forward the frontier of public innovation. It's very interesting. No, yes. Yes. I think the, unsurprisingly, what is really missing for cities is an established mechanism whereby they can learn from each other, from the users, from the providers. Now, their best practice in UK, they launch a public consultation. In France, they create working groups. They incentivize public investments. So there are best practices out there. Now, the problem with local politicians is that they usually focus on what has happened rather than why it has happened. So despite the good intentions, I mean, uh, the, it has never been so difficult to legislate and plan for given that consumer behaviors have been changing dramatically right. in the last five years since the sharing economy has emerged. And uh, I don't want to take a lot of more time perhaps, but anyway, yeah. uh, the um, uh, you, you talk about all the challenges the cities have in the framework of, of, of climate change, uh, CO2 emission reductions, recyclability, congestion, uh, regeneration, uh, but also social innovation and the digital agenda. I mean, every city has targets in these areas, and particularly the cities and members of the Covenant of Mayor, which is a great uh, European initiative. Now, as a matter of fact, indeed, is is how do you position the collaborative economy to achieve, to help the cities achieve those targets? Yeah, yeah no, I think, as I was saying, that's the key, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask Miguel about, about Spain, because you work with public institutions as well as private institutions. I'd, I'd love to get your perspective very concretely on Spanish cities that, that you work with. But, another question. We have one question here, and then there is a lady in the back. Hello, hi. Hello. Um, I have a pretty specific interest, actually, and I think it's then to going to Marco, because um, you mentioned that you are in this European coalition, right? So I suppose you work close with the EU, and probably you were also involved in drafting this opinion some years ago that was from the, I don't remember exactly like which body it was, but I would really be really interested in hearing a bit more about your honest perspective of the interest of the EU in policy uh, that would in under in under ten seconds. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> asking about this specifically because I'm like from the uh, little army of researchers here, and you know this whatever the interest is of the EU that also affects the calls for proposals and so on. So it would be really nice to hear something from a person who's okay. there. Okay, position of the EU very quickly, I and then if we very, can very give the microphone to the, that lady at the back. Uh, the collaborative economy has exploded in Brussels in the last uh, few months. We were not there as early as the French or the British, but now it has exploded. Why? Because Uber made a lawsuit uh, to, to the Spaniards and to the Germans, but they did not decide to make this lawsuit in Madrid or in Berlin, they decided to do it in Brussels. Why? Because their issues are affecting the internal market. It's cross-border. So it's affecting an area which is a remit of the European Union and its competition. I think that was the stepping stone that made right. the, the EU realize the collaborative Great. economy needs to be addressed. It's very annoying how the EU kind of tends to react against large American companies to do it. But, but in a way, it, it, it does move forward that way. So we have a question over there. Yes. Yes, thank you. Are any of you involved uh, personally or in your own cities with participatory budgeting uh, project, that movement? And uh, are any of you working on initiatives to bring a more participatory democratic approach to taxes and behind that to profit sharing? Thank you. Great, we'll take that question. I can tell you as the Parisian on this panel, we are extremely proud of our participatory budget, which is the largest in the world, six, close to 600 million euros over the term of this mayor. And so people voted and, uh, and it's working really well. There's a great website if you haven't seen it. So. 
participatory budgeting or participatory fiscal policy, maybe? <laughs> we are uh, going to launch in uh, June in Bologna. Um, it's something you know, similar to participatory budgeting, but it goes beyond. The idea is to uh, hand over to the nine subdiv local su administrati administrative subdivisions, 10 millions, uh, almost one million for each uh, neighborhood, basically, uh, to co-design uh, the collaborative policies that can you know, transform these neighborhoods into collaborative ecosystems. So this is participatory budgeting, but at, this, at the same time, one step beyond, because it's going to be co-designing through co-designing sessions. So this is also, uh, you know, to respond to your, you know, the, the, the kind of work that politicians are doing. Because one thing that I'm noticing is also that representative democracies uh, are changing thanks to collaboration. Politicians do not act anymore like, you know, the delegates. They basically become community organizers and they work together with bureaucrats and citizens around the table. And so they, they co-design the decision and they co-make the, uh, they co-implement the, 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 mm -hmm. the, po the right. public policy. Yeah, very interesting. Um, I, I will get to your question in a second, but I want to go back to the, the, the main question that I asked in the beginning, which is the actual challenges that cities are trying to solve through any means necessary in the sharing economy, and as Helen was saying, is a very promising way to get there. So I wanted to ask you, Miguel, maybe about... Um, the sort of top two or three concrete problems that cities in Spain uh, are, are facing that they are looking at addressing through this, this tool of the collaboration economy? Um, I mean, at the end, um, the, the initiatives linked with the collaborative models, uh, which trying to solve some problems related with the city living, mainly are coming from the citizens and private entities. Uh, but nevertheless, there are few cities, and especially Barcelona, which is one of the, the, the most important cities that um, the public administration is taking part on, in, on this movement in order to solve uh, city issues. Um, but in some ways, it's contradictory, because in Barcelona, uh, Barcelona has been one of the unique cities that have fine Airbnb uh, right. abroad. Yeah. Uh, Uber is banned by, by a court decision. Sorry, the Airbnb, just to remind everybody, what was it about? What was the fine about? Was it about security? Was it about? It was about licenses. Licenses. So, uh, right. I mean, the hotels and transportation at the end is a heavy lobby, the pre-existing right. pre industries and as right, right. other countries, they are having problems. But uh, in trying to, to say some examples about uh, collaborative initiatives coming from the public area, we have an, a strong network of bike sharing called Bithin. In this is, uh, I mean, it's not peer-to-peer, -peer -peer, it's on demand. But Barcelona is one of the best places in Spain that this is a reality. As a, it's a real public transportation solution. Uh, we have the Fab Labs uh, network that is amazing because um, there are many co-working spaces that you may find also 3, 3D pr printings and all these kind of things. And there is an, uh, an interesting point in relation to the local election that we are going to have is a, a coalition of parties, one of them is Podemos, proposed a, an alternative currency for the local, uh, for the city, and one of the things are the, or, the, or the solution is to pay the civil servants with this uh, currency to, to give a public aid based in this uh, currency. I mean, right. if a company wants to um, be a provider, if this company is going to accept this currency in the public tender, it's going to be very much positional, no? Wow, um, I don't know, I, there are a few examples, but at the same time, it's, the sharing economy is a very hot slogan, but at right. the end, we are the procrastination uh, insane or whatever. Right, yeah. And the public administration, is, sometimes if you go there, it's like visit Mordor. Right. But, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's very I, fun. I felt that. 
Is just a quick question: Is the the sharing economy? Is there a, a chapter or a paragraph in it in the candidates program for these local elections? Have you noticed that? All of them, they have a very sexy uh, sentence called digital economy. Yes. And some of them, they have uh, the, the, sentence, the words right. sharing economy, especially Podemos. Right. But Podemos also has a, a conflict because they are very critical with Uber. Because at the end, Uber is, is, I mean, it's not fighting, but the contrary is the taxi and is uh, citizens making an activity and as a freelancers. Right. It's not like Airbnb, that the, the contrary at the end is a, an enterprise and a, right, a relevant right, right. structure, no? Okay, great. We have a question, front row. I might, I'm told that this is the last one, so I will try to make it a good question. Uh, anyways, I'm Simone from Wisher. Um, my question is to ask you guys to come back to the topic. So the, th the thing is, how can we really st stop reinventing the wheel, no? Because if there's something interesting in Bologna, for example, experience, is that this is an open source project, no? You can take it and reuse it in your, in your city. And in a way, I think it goes to Marco's point about disruption, no? In a digital marketplace, what disrupted once we got open source software. And I think we, we really need this open source approach to policy making. And last bit of a question on top of this is how much uh, the choice at the end of the day is a political choice. So I, I don't know if uh, it's clear, but uh, you know, open source is not automatic. It, also, in the digital marketplace, you have an ideology. It's the Silicon Valley ideology right now. So what ideology do we need, and what open source tool do we need for disrupting cities in, in, this, in this direction? Interesting. I'll make a couple of comments. You were right to bring us back to the question. Um, but I think uh, to avoid reinventing the wheel means that the wheel has been invented, and it's perfect, and it doesn't need anything else. You know, we're actually, we haven't... Um, solve very much, actually, um, in some of the problems, either when we're thinking about sustainable cities or smart cities or collaborative cities. And to your point of kind of um, the diffusion or the sort of spreading of good ideas, you know, there are the long tail of brilliantly well-evidenced um, experiments and ideas, the, the percentage of those that get taken up by other people is, is woefully small, and it's a continual challenge, certainly as, as Nesta, always trying to think about how we can kind of, what are the models for spreading and scaling good ideas? Now, Marco sort of is, is kind of key to that in a way, because if we're looking to thinking about spreading uh, good practices across different cities, then some kind of network for sharing is, seems essential to me. Would you add that? Yeah, so that's why I've been advocating for a long time that something that Neil, uh, um, is doing in US it should also take place in Europe, a network of European sharing cities. Perhaps at the beginning, something to be embedded into a more uh, established and experienced network, uh, such as the Covenant of Mayor, which I mentioned earlier, but also your organization, Matthew, if it's, yeah. it's a good idea. I have the answer to the first question, and maybe a remark on the second. Go for it. So I think that, uh, you know, how can we avoid reinventing the wheel? I think that the answer could be share stories, you know, a yeah. toolkit that sh we share is developing and maybe it needs to be, you know, an open source tool where, you know, everybody can work together and I think that we share is more than willing to open it up, the yeah. process. Absolutely. That's, that's what we need, you know, in the, to, to, to have a set, a menu of tools that uh, every city can... Uh, uh, take from and uh, try to adapt to their local conditions. And the second one, though, you know, whenever they say it's it's not possible, it's not feasible, uh, it's 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 not true. Uh, I don't need to go back to Polanyi and talk about the great transformation to make to to, to 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 demonstrate that the market was just a choice, a political choice. At least capitalism was a uh, political choice. Uh, so it's always a political choice. One of the things that we really need to work on together is to how to redir redirect the policy choices that are made at the EU level on EU funding. Like, for instance, Horizon 2020. I had a hard time to present my first uh, Horizon 2020 last year, and this year it was just a little bit easier because I knew that something is changing also in the evaluation process. So talk to the European Investment Bank 
and instead of funding great infrastructure projects, maybe uh, try to finance local micro collaborative infrastructure projects like you know co-working spaces or other forms of you know collaborative spaces. I think this is, these are the things that we should work on and create a movement of collaborative cities, of co-cities that are working on this frontier. Yep, no, I agree. For those of you who don't know about Shared Tories, you should look it up. It's probably on the WeShare website. Very interesting initiative that they launched. Actually, maybe somebody can tell us about it in a minute. Just an invitation to do that. I want to turn now to uh, Amandine to ask you a little bit. So you're working with, uh, with local government and territories in the western part of France, beautiful part of France, Brittany. And I'm just curious to know, because a lot of the times when people talk about the sharing economy and the collaborative economy, they think it's the, you know, the premise of large cities, you know. And, and so what happens in smaller, you know, governance unit? And indeed, and the question was raised earlier, what happens in rural territories? And so what are the sort of challenges and opportunities you see in your work in the, the field? First, um, collaborative practice are a real reality in a uh, in a little cities and in the real um, rural territories, um, but um, I think there is two main obstacles actually. Uh, the first is a cultural obstacle. Um, uh, the, um, at school we learn we don't learn to cooperate. Everybody know it here, but um, uh, when we talk with uh, politicians in the local governments. Um, it's uh, really true, and uh, uh, to be the first, uh, the competitivity are the first word to, and it's like a competi competitive, uh, territorial competitivity too, and uh, it's like two little cities, but they will not cooperate together, they will fight together, so it's the first point, and the second is an understanding difficulties. Uh, if I say it in this place, uh, we are in a digital society. I'm sure everybody will say, yes, of course. But this sentence, uh, when we said it, uh, a lot of people don't understand what I said. Um, it's, uh, there is a real um, high hug between uh, the, the people who are living in the digital society and they are understand the, the issue of uh, the, the society is in transition and people would just not understand what it means. And when I ask them, um, what are the digital issues for territories? They will uh, answer me by talking about uh, infrastructures and pipes. And uh, it's, it's really the first big problem because uh, when, you when you are speaking about uh, Bologna with co-creative, uh, co-creation, uh, co it's impossible if they don't understand the first time we are in digital right. society and every, uh, everything is different. Right, so do, do you think there's a risk of these smaller areas being left behind? You know, I mean, arguably, you know, the digital revolution, whatever you want to call it, left a lot of these smaller territories behind in a way. If you look at, for example, cell phone coverage or whatever, which small cities talk about all the time, do you think this is another thing that risks leaving the collaborative economy, is it another trend that risks leaving these smaller areas that you work with behind? Yes and no. Um, yes, really, because uh, there is really a big, big difference of comprehension of our issue of society. Uh, so we have to work on, and uh, territories is really necessary. Um, but there is really a lot of practice and a lot of citizens who practice um, each day's uh, collaborative economy. So there is a citizen who are involved in and they want to. And I observe two, three main um, uh, positive evolution. Uh, the first is um, um, there is an um, experimentation culture we are developing. Um, the little uh, local governments uh, are more flexible, and this is a big advantage. And the second one, is they are, um, uh, the resources uh, are lower and lower. So they need to, to try, to test, to experiment right. new way. 
and there is a lot of experimentation in the little, little uh, mm -hmm. town. And um, the second one is uh, there is um, um, uh, more, of, um, more and more uh, citizen and distribute organization on topics like uh, uh, urban agriculture, uh, social innovation, cycle economy. These topics um, interest more and more citizens and they uh, organize themselves. And this is not very new. What is new is that um, the local government are interested by them and they uh, test some some uh, conversations, some dialogues. They try to find a, a way to work together. In non, for example, in three months, uh, there is uh, a several group, uh, citizen group who grew up, and uh, they are actually in conversation with uh, um, Nantes Metropole to find way to work together about challenge about the 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 plan of uh, territorial development. And I think it's a good way to, right. to um, change the territorial governance. And the third one is uh, we are actually uh, started, um, we are starting a new re action research program and uh, we uh, propose to uh, um, public actor to come in the program, to get involved in. And the topic is to, um, to, uh, to explore the contribution about collaborative practice to develop sustainable life models and sustainable territories. And what is very, very uh, good uh, is that there is different uh, of uh, kinds of uh, local government who are involved. We have really little city in rural territories and big cities like not uh, where right. big cities for our territories. Yeah. So act now there is really, uh, they don't want to, to, to try to, to understand what is a collaborative economy only because it's uh, mediatic topics. Right. Really now they want to uh, develop their own tools in order to, um, to manage a collaborative right. territorial development. Great, very good to hear. Okay, we have one question, and our friends from Sheratories are gonna just give us a quick highlight. So let's do both of those things, please. Hi there, um, I don't want to narrow the, discuss the discussion, but I think there is a giant rusty uh, wheel that we are not talking so much about, which is public health care. Do you have any insight on yeah. what is moving in Europe, what we can do, how we can tackle this issue? Great. I think that's a, that's a very good, good example, and it was a question that I was going to ask all of you, so please uh, jump in on that. I wanted to broaden it a little bit maybe to see, like, what are the, the, the levers that work, the policy levers that work, and what, where are the biggest wins? So certainly healthcare might be one of those things. Helen, please. Yep. So, um, not to do too much of a shameless plug for Nesta, but we have done some really interesting work on people-powered health. So this isn't digitally enabled sharing economy platforms, but it is people were um, uh, healthcare systems being transformed in a way that where people are supporting people more uh, in, in distributed networks. So I encourage you have a look at the Nesta website and the people-powered health work, which is genuinely game-changing. I think and could say great. the NHS in the UK is of at least five billion is what we have modelled on, wow, which is great. That's amazing. Um, in terms of the levers, um, I might interpret those as sort of what questions do city leaders need to ask um, uh, in order to sort of think about how to create the enabling conditions for a sharing city. And there's a number of them. The first is how does it think about regulation? So is it um, is it kind of open to the disruptive enter entry for new businesses, disruptive business models? And does it really do enough thinking about the positive and negative rebound effects of doing so? All innovation isn't always good innovation and there are always side effects and city leaders have to balance something quite important there. Uh, the second is um, how it thinks about investment. So how does it create the kind of ecosystem to provide access to finance for collaborative ventures, be they very small community or large um, large initiatives. Um, how does it think about commissioning? So in the sort of um, spirit of an earlier conversation, how does it think about commissioning public services differently that kind of um, aspire to and embody collaborative principles, which takes you into all sorts of interesting territory? 
Um, how does it think about connectivity, not just connectivity of high-speed access and um, uh, inclusion, but also the kind of um, distribution logistics networks that are needed to kind of facilitate exchanges between large groups of people? And I think also how it thinks about data. So I sort of mentioned earlier that um, many sharing economy platforms, certainly the most dominant ones, hold an enormous amount of data that's incredibly valuable to people who are thinking about city planning or city policy making. So I'd love to see much more experimentation with opening up data in a way that kind of can satisfy uh, both sides. And thinking, so how does a city think about the data that itself owns to create right. sort of much more friction-free engagement, such as opening up data around verification and authentication to make that sort of reputation-based systems much more sort of... Um, Easy. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. range of things. Certainly, yeah. We're, so, so Helen has painted a very quick but comprehensive portrait of these questions or buttons that, that could be pushed, regulation, investment, commissioning, etc. Where do you, the rest of you, see the big possible wins? Healthcare, maybe where else? Well, I think before I answer that, the, it all boils down to local governments uh, redefining the, the metrics they use to measure and gouge the strength of the economy. They're using very old-fashioned uh, impact assessment methods. Uh, I'm, I'm working with freelancers, and I'm working on, uh, on, on independent labor arrangements. And uh, the metrics the local governments are using is the number of jobs and uh, work placements they create, overlooking what the independent professionals could do with work rather than jobs. Um, about the, leave, the, the leverages, um, you, you might have hinted at yourself before. Procurement, it's, it's the greatest power. That the, the, power the purchasing power of the local government is incredible. Uh, public procurement is responsible to uh, something like 20% of uh, European GDP. And it's a number one demand side uh, force right. through which innovations could scale to the market. I mean, think of... Uh, some very important technologies like the telephone, the rails, the railways, they, they went from fringe to mainstream because the public sector adopted mm. it. So you see the potential. Yeah, absolutely, procurement. Yep, Miguel, quick comment and then share stories. Yeah. Um, one of, thinking about Spain, we have uh, this, um, Mm, population pyramid where the, we are going to have a huge, like other countries in Europe, a huge uh, percentage of all people. And I think this kind of uh, collaborative models could, could um, generate a huge value because the public services many times are not prepared for that. Right. And I think it's, it's a key element. And just uh, mentioning the the, the position of the public stakeholders or the decision making. Right. I think that uh, we need, a, at least from my perspective and thinking in my experience right now in, Sp in Spain, we need uh, also an innovation in the decision making process. We need an innovation in the way to regulate something. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, uh, many times they, they pass a law before they find a policy. Right. And this is a complete mistake that we are having uh, mostly every day, no? So right. Okay, great. Chris, ten seconds, and 10 then seconds. no, and just you know to stress this uh, this detail, every city should find it, its uh, entry point to sharing, collaboration because sharing and collaboration takes culture, education. So uh, there is no winning point. Every city should find its way to to sharing and collaboration. Uh, so to find the, 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 the area, the sector, the, the thing on which it's, uh, they are more ready to collaborate on. So in, in Bologna was urban commons, the public space, the green spaces, the abandoned buildings. In Palermo, for instance, it's mobi is mobility. Right. So really, the, the, device, the advice is find your own way right. to sharing. Okay, great. Samuela. So we've talked about territories. Here they are. Okay, so thanks, I'm so minutes. from WeShare, no, even not two minutes. So I just take this opportunity to, to say a few words about territories because some participants mentioned the project. So territories is actually a project that we launched 
with the WISHA team a couple of months ago. And the idea is to help uh, the local government size the opportunities related to uh, the collaborative economy at local level. And for that, we've, uh, we've built a toolkit, um, the toolkit that is open source. And um, we want to have uh, open governance as well. So we invite you to join us in, in, this, uh, in this process. And we are at the moment thinking about platform to use open data and uh, research to assess the impact of uh, our, our process and the collaborative economy at local level. So please, if you're interested in uh, joining uh, our project, come next to the stage after the session and we'll be happy to, to talk with you. Thank you. Um. Yes, oh, I just want to add that our perspective is to uh, make the uh, collaborative practices part of strategies that uh, local administration can take to uh, build um, local development, sustainable local development. And I think that this sort of makes the difference because uh, all these practices are already happening, but most of the times they are pattern, you know, very isolated and so. And uh, I'm very excited to invite you, all of you, at least to go to the, this website, which is commoncamps. Common. <laughs> it's commons.camp. And it's the first time we open source uh, this alpha draft of this toolkit. So we invite organization and individual to co-design this toolkit. And, and then everybody. Yeah, Excellent. This will, this will really happen in real life in uh, uh, real near our neighbors at the end of June. So you're all invited. Great. To check. Thank you. So go check it out. Thank you very much. Um, we are about five minutes away from a well-earned beer or other kinds of beverage. Um, but uh, I wanted to see if there were more questions, and then I will ask each of the panelists to give an insanely insightful and quotable 30 second or 60 second closing statement. So be ready for that. Any other questions? It is now or never. No more? One, two, three. Great, I'm glad we have, we have tapped into your, your, your desire for questions. So closing statements, please. Okay, my last word will be that for me, we can't um, um, thinking about only uh, collaborative cities development. Uh, if we only focus on cities, we will have a problem because uh, there is people who are living around and a lot of um, very urban uh, territories have a very big problem actually with uh, habitation, mobility and else. And I think we have to, to think about territory um, collaborative. Okay. <laughs> Not sure that was gentlemanly <laughs> or, or coward, so but... Uh, so two things. I completely agree with that. And, uh, and on a bigger perspective, I think we may come to regret our kind of uh, dislocation from all things natural very quickly in not too many years. Um, I think that the glittering insight maybe it isn't. But I think the people here generally at WeShare and the people who are just involved in the sharing economy are very passionate they represent a particular value set and sometimes ideology that I completely uh, align with. But the narrative, the language, the lexicon, the passion is sometimes a complete anathema to anybody who's trying to make policy in this area. And so communicating in a way that makes uh, appeals to the kind of priorities of city governments and also speaks the similar language, um, however uncomfortable that might feel, um, change is probably far more effective by doing that. I fully agree with that. Who's next? I mean, I'm going to reinforce your, your comments and I'm going to read the, the easy way. Because in some way, when you are talking about sharing economy or peer-to-peer, -peer, it's like a very, very sophisticated uh, vocabulary or ideology. But there is a recent survey about ecology culture in Spain, and 71% uh, of the Spanish people is willing to participate in an ecological consume group. 78 is willing to participate in an exchange market. The 80% is willing to participate in a time bank structure. So, I mean, the, the behavior or the willingness is there. So, that's a good feeling. Great. 
Thank you. My very last message is uh, help us build a network of uh, sharing cities in Europe as a means to uh, learn from other peers and to inform uh, your policy makers at the local level. Future is urban. Uh, economy already is almost two is going to be two thirds produced in uh, urban areas. People are going to live for 80% in urban areas. I think we need to work together to develop a, you know, a logical and uh, theoretical framework for collaborative cities. And uh, I think none of us is able to push the frontier ahead by, by itself. So let's work together. This is my hope and my message. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you all very much for, for helping us make, uh, make this a uh, very lively session. Thanks to WeShare for, for advancing this. I think it's the early days of this conversation. I think what we can agree, and certainly it's my view, that this is an exciting area of, of inquiry and research, still to be shaped. Um, and I completely agree with the points that were made earlier that, that the language of policy and the language of groups like this still is kind of far apart. Uh, but definitely having more conversations like this is very helpful. So thank you all. Thank you very much to the panel. You've been fantastic.